At the UNGA, diplomacy is highly visible and publicized. There are cameras and journalists everywhere. But not all diplomacy is like that. Sometimes it happens in the shadows, like what's happening in Israel this week. Reports say two delegations have arrived in the country, one from Pakistan, another from Indonesia. Both these delegations are quote-unquote secret, meaning neither country has officially sent this delegation. Simply put, it does not exist on paper. Let's talk a bit more about them. Indonesia has reportedly sent a senior government official. What about Pakistan? Well, their delegation is said to be much bigger. It is headed by Nasim Ashraf. He served as a junior minister under, under Parvez Musharraf. He was also the chief of Pakistan's cricket board. Put together, the delegation has 10 members. Four of them live in Pakistan. The others are settled in America and Britain. Later this week, the Pakistani delegation is expected to meet Israel's president. Now, why are these visits important? Because neither country recognizes Israel. You see, both Pakistan and Indonesia are Islamic countries. They support the creation of a Palestinian state and by extension, they do not have official ties with Israel. The question is, could that be changing? Officially, both countries are sticking to the old policy, but across the Muslim world, sentiments are changing. First, the UAE recognized Israel, then Bahrain, Morocco, Sudan. According to some reports, Saudi Arabia could be next. My point is, Israel is not kryptonite anymore. Some of the leading Islamic countries have recognized them, so Pakistan and Indonesia could also be considering this. Recently, the exchanges have picked up speed. In late July, an Israeli delegation visited Indonesia to discuss economic ties. Before that, in January, an Indonesian team visited Tel Aviv to discuss pandemic-related strategies. Both times, Jakarta played down the interactions. Same with Pakistan. In the month of May, a Pakistani-American delegation traveled to Israel. Two months before that, Pakistan took part in joint drills with Israel and the U.S. And the common thread in all these interactions is the United States. Washington is lobbying its partners to recognize Israel. The question is, what is in it for them? Mostly financial and military gains. Israel and Indonesia already carry out indirect trade worth $500 million. And with normalization, that could increase many fold. For Pakistan, it's even more dire. Their economy is on the verge of complete collapse. So Islamabad does not have the luxury of choosing who to, who to trade with. And don't forget the military transfers. Israel has mastered spy technology and drones, something both Pakistan and Indonesia are on the lookout for. As for Israel, the benefits are obvious. Indonesia is the most populous Muslim country in the world. Pakistan is second. What's more, it is the only Muslim country with nuclear weapons. So recognition from them is a diplomatic priority for Israel. Sort of like a political coup. Now, I know what you're thinking. If it is mutually beneficial, why hasn't there been a breakthrough? Mostly because of public sentiment. The public in Pakistan and Indonesia are hostile to the idea. So naturally, the leadership is wary. They don't want to risk angering them in favor of Israel. Having said that, one factor could change the public sentiment, and that is Saudi Arabia. Riyadh is the de facto leader of the Muslim world. If they recognize Israel, it would be a green light for other Muslim nations. Where does that leave Palestine? Frankly, in a tough spot. Most of their biggest supporters have already recognized Israel. And the reason is quite simple. The economic, military and technological benefits. Even Israel's staunchest enemies have made this pivot. Like the Turkish president, Recep Tayyip Erdogan. Back in 2010, Israel and Turkey broke off diplomatic relations. And now, 12 years later, they are repairing those ties. Later this week, Erdogan will be meeting Israel's Prime Minister on the sidelines of the UN General Assembly. It will be the first such meeting since 2008. Erdogan is also planning to visit Israel. He did not say when, but it would be his first visit since 2005. So clearly, Erdogan wants a reset. 
and the reason is once again economics. Turkey's economy is struggling with record inflation. So what does Erdogan do? He warms up to Israel. By doing this, he is hitting two birds with one stone. A, he is securing the benefits of an integrated West Asian economy. And B, he is getting himself onto America's good books. The same logic applies to most Muslim countries. Their ideological commitment to Palestine is waning. And at the same time, their economic condition has been worsened by the pandemic and the war in Ukraine. Israel is benefiting from the perfect geopolitical storm. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.